Good morning. My name is Linda Seiler, and today I'm going to share with you about our church's work in Peru. I've been to Peru eight different times, and over the years, my friends and some of my colleagues have asked me, why does your church travel 3,000 miles to help the poor in another country when there's already so much poverty in this country that needs to be addressed? So in my response to them, I share a story that I carried in my head and I carried in my heart for 12 years. In 2005, our very first trip to Peru, and on one of the very first days, a group of people from our church, 15 in all, went to a certain part of town where we were going to help a woman and her adult daughter. We were going to help them by removing their old home and giving them a new improved home. Now, to do this, we made a very long line that started at the front of the house and went all the way out to the street. I probably, though, should stop for a minute and tell you about this house because you need to get the visual picture that we got when we got there. If you can imagine three tall buildings that were positioned in such a way that the sides of each of those buildings formed three sides of that woman's house. And for the front of the house and the roof of the house, she took discarded materials. She took boards, cardboard, heavy plastic sheeting, and bamboo mats. And to anchor down the roof so it wouldn't blow away, she used heavy rocks. So, we had this very long line, and as you would probably guess, Pastor Johnson was standing on top of this house. <laughs> and he would take one piece of material at a time, and he would hand it down to the person right below him, who would hand it to the next person, who would hand it to the next person, and it would go down the line until it got to the end of the line, and we'd put it in a pile in the middle of the street. Now, as we were doing this, community members would come up to the pile one at a time, and they would remove one piece from the pile and they would take it home, and they would use it to improve their own home. And you've heard the, the words that one man's trash is another man's treasure. I think this is especially true in Peru, because those people never threw away anything. Everything had a purpose. That very first year in Peru, I learned something really important. I learned that in our country, we really don't have an idea of what true poverty is. And that's because we have government agencies and we have social programs, and they provide for most of our poor. But in Peru, there are no programs and there are no government agencies to help them. So our presence in that place and the care that we gave those people was the thing that gave them hope in this world. During my eight years, I was able to witness a lot of things that we did. And some of those things include that we built furniture and built houses for families. We made repairs and improvements to orphanages, schools, and churches. We provided glasses and dental care for hundreds of people, held vacation Bible school, installed toilets. We built a sheep wash. We established a successful business with an income for the community of the people in one hall. And we helped establish two cottage industries for groups in Tarma. We established a social service program, and we provided church services, baptisms, and now even a permanent church building in Tarma. We literally and figuratively built bridges of stone and bridges of love for people who live to see and a continent away from us. And we did all of this working side by side, which I personally think was quite a miracle because most of us didn't even speak the same language. But our actions spoke volumes because more important than the things that we gave them was the care and the love that we shared with them. So now teaching is my passion. It's what I did for 38 years. So my greatest joy when we go to Peru is when we get to go to the schools, because I get to meet the teachers and their students. And any teacher from the United States looking in that classroom for the first time 
would immediately notice the lack of supplies and especially the lack of books in those rooms. So while we're in Peru, we purchase supplies and books and sports equipment and playground equipment and we purchase computers. But by far the most important thing we give them for education is uniforms. Because in Peru, if a child doesn't have a uniform, he or she is not allowed to go to school. So the dozens of uniforms that you have purchased for those children have not only given them the right to go to school, but you've provided them a hope for their future. I would first encourage each of you to go to Peru so you can see it firsthand. The things I learned being there <coughs> far outnumber the things I did for them. But I know that everybody in this church for different reasons can't go to Peru, so I encourage you to give to those people. In Matthew 25, verse, chapter, I'm sorry, verse 40, we are told, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. I hope you'll go home today and very carefully read that insert in your bulletin. And then I hope you will prayerfully consider what you can give towards the vision for mission. Thank you very much. <laughs> 